Hello, my name is Marion. Welcome back to another video. In today's lesson, we are going to talk about the chest. You can use this to study for your CQR as well for CT. For the procedure section, this is the section that we are still covering. It is going to have about 71 questions, but for this lesson, we are going to talk about the CT chest, cardiac CT, CT angiography, so we'll go over all of these topics under the chest. And for the neck and chest section, you have about 21 questions on your registry. So if the doctor ordered a CT chest, it will mainly be because of lung disease, to look at pulmonary nodules, detect a mass, to stage for cancer, checking the airways, CTA of the vessels, and it can be given with or without contrast, or it can be ordered as with and without contrast. And this is a picture how the image will look if you're looking at the lungs. So you want to make sure that for a chest, the patient is lying on their back, their arms are raised above their head. This is going to reduce those artifacts from the shoulder. Make sure that you are covering your long apices all the way down to your angles. I always go to mid kidneys. And just make sure that you have your protocol set up correctly. If you are scanning a pediatric chest, make sure you have your KVP range set at the correct range. Or for an adult, make sure it's set for an adult KVP range and not a child. Depending on your protocol, make sure that you are sending over the images in soft tissue windows, lung windows, and bone windows. And the reason why I always scan to the kidneys is because during the cancer staging, sometimes it could go to the adrenal glands, the um, cancer can. So to check for METs, you always want to just get mid kidneys so that you can get your adrenal glands in the image. And these are just numbers that you need to convert to memory whenever you are looking at the window level and window width for your chest. This is an example of whenever you are scanning, you have your soft tissue window level and window width, you have your bone and your lung. And if you don't know how to window level, you can use the mouse cursor at your job to just move the mouse back and forth, up and down. And it can show you how to brighten or make the images darker. And this is just an example I made whenever you are scanning for a chest. I am showing you here where to cover from. So just cover within this area or just go by how you was trained or what your job wants you to do. But this is just where I cover from. If a patient is needing a CT scan with contrast, it can be due to several reasons um, for lung cancer, inflammation, lung nodules. Um, so the doctor is just ordering it with contrast just to make sure things get covered and you can see that abnormality better. Your injection rates will vary. It can be anywhere from 1.5 milliliters to 4 milliliters. If you are injected in the hand or the wrist, it can only be for a regular CT exam. If you are doing like a CTA study, you cannot inject four or even three in the hand or the wrist. It's better to just start the IV in the AC, which you have to have it in the AC for NGO studies. So at least an 18 gauge or 20 gauge for those CTA exams. Make sure that you are going by the patient's weight and their kidney functions whenever you are giving contrast. And if you need to, you can check with the radiologist and they will let you know if you need to reduce the rate or not. You also have your high resolution CT of the lungs. A lot of times whenever a patient is coming in, this is done without contrast. The patient will be lying on their back for some pictures and then on their stomach. The machine will tell them several times when to hold their breath, when to blow it out. And then here are some of the reasons why it will be ordered from the doctor. So just make sure that you know this information. 
follow your facility scan protocol. Like I was saying in a previous slide, the patient will be on their back and then they will roll onto their stomach. So I know sometimes with um, certain patients, depending on if they're able to lift their arms up or lie on their stomach, you just have to instruct them what you're doing so that they can tolerate the position, let them know how long it would take for them to be on their back or be on their stomach. And this is an example of a CTA chest. You will see how the pulmonary is bright and white because contrast is given. So just make sure that you know your anatomy. Make sure that you know that you are looking at an axial image and you are looking at a coronal image. And for the injection rate for a PE chest, I normally go around four. Sometimes, depending on if they have a good IV, you can go to 4.5, even five. Make sure they have an 18 or a 20 gauge in their AC. If they do come down, let's say if you work in the ER department or if you work in the hospital on the inpatient and outpatient side, just make sure that they have an 18 or a 20 gauge in the AC or the forearm. If they do not, another IV will have to be started. If you cannot find one, you may have to call the team that comes down with the ultrasound machine and finds the vein. So at my facility, we call it the VAT team. And I do have examples here where I normally like to scan for this type of PE study. And I'm showing where I am covering. Also under the corona where the arrow is pointing, that's where I put my smart prep. You also have your ECG. Make sure that you know these terms and just know how it works whenever you are doing a CT heart scan. And you also have where you do calcium scoring. Make sure that you know the number and the range. Um, sometimes the patient may ask you, um, do they have a lot of calcium built up? I do not tell them. I would just tell them that we will send the images out to the radiologist. So just, just know what you are looking at. Know how to label those calcium and those calcified arteries because at most places the machine may not label it for you. You may have to go in and circle it and annotate and label the arteries. So just make sure that you know your anatomy. This is another example of just making sure that you know your anatomy. And then you have your cardiac CT. Um, just know these terms, know why it should be detected and why it should be used, know what the patient has to come in and how, how they have to remove certain clothing or just let them know, hey, make sure you didn't take or drink any caffeine or caffeinated supplements today because we do not want your heart rate to be high for this type of exam. This is another example of a calcium scoring. So just make sure that you know the range. If you know that one to 10 is a minimal amount of calcium in someone's arteries. So just know the range for this. And if a patient does come in, they should not have had any caffeine for the day. If their heart rate is too high, um, beta blockers can be given by a nurse to control the heart rate. You want your heart rate to be anywhere from 65 to 70 beats per minute. If it's more than that and the patient cannot take beta blockers, then just contact the radiologist to see if the patient needs to reschedule or not. This is how I set up a calcium scoring. I have the box marked right here for you, how I set it up. Just make sure you know your anatomy, make sure you know how to locate it and find it in those arteries. Just get you a good anatomy book, like a sectional anatomy book, and it has a lot of this information in it where you have your anatomy already marked for you, where you can study that information. And you also have your heart. We're still covering the heart uh, for the contraindications to having um, 
this type of scan done, especially if a patient is allergic to iodine, if their heart rate is too fast and you cannot give them any type of medicine to regulate it and control it. So um, this would be certain reasons why the scan wouldn't be able to be performed. And then you have the indication for a CT heart exam. More terms for you to know. It's good to know your vocabulary whenever you are studying for your registry. Even if you're studying for your CQR, it's good to know this information. Make sure you know the difference between spatial resolution and contrast resolution. That is very important to know. And also um, know that if you are doing a CT heart scan and the nurses will have to come in or like a radiology nurse, they will administer something called nitroglycerin. You may hear it be called nitro and that's given under the patient's tongue just to help dilate their vessels in their heart. Make sure you know your R&R &R interval. Make sure you know your heart anatomy. And whenever your hearts are done, you can use anywhere from 75 milliliters to 100 milliliters of iodine to be given at an injection rate of four to six milliliters. Um, just make sure that you are flushing the line with saline and checking it before you start. And then you have also more information. Um, try to place the IV catheter in the right AC if possible. This avoids streaking along the heart. If you cannot get a good IV in the AC, call for a nurse or call for a VAT team to come down to assist. It just gives you a better test if the IV is in the right arm for your heart and it cannot be in the hand or the wrist. All right, more information for you to know. Just make sure you are studying this. Make sure you know when you should perform your MPRs, your 3D images, what each radiologist prefer. If they prefer you to do your MIPS, if they prefer you do 3D images, just go by your facilities protocol. And just more information on why this type of exam would be ordered. All right, this was a quick presentation. We just went over the CT chairs. Um, I appreciate you all for watching my videos and supporting them. I hope you all um, the best of luck on your CT registry and your CQR. I do have more lessons coming. The next lesson will be on the CT abdomen and the pelvis. So just make sure that you are subscribed and that you stay tuned for the next lesson. Thank you all for watching my presentation. I hope you enjoyed this one. Bye.